Hi, my name's Knuckle, and I'd like to talk about some of Rust's special features. Let's say you're writing a simple program to calculate sales tax on a $3 purchase. This may seem like a valid piece of code, and it may be valid in another programming language. However, there are two concepts in Rust, mutability and ownership, that make this invalid. Mutability is what prevents the first three lines from compiling. In Rust, variables by default can only be assigned to once. We need to manually specify that the variable can be assigned to more than once. To do this, we put the mut keyword after the let keyboard to change the variable from immutable to mutable. You may be asking why, quite reasonably. It seems like an arbitrary restriction. A common problem in programming comes when data is written to. Sometimes you forget about when these writes occur, and this can lead to unexpected results. Rust helps prevent these bugs by making sure variables can only be written to if the programmer really wants to. Now that this part of the program is fixed, let's move on to the next. The Rust compiler claims that purchase has been moved into the function. What does that mean? To understand this error, you must understand ownership. Every bit of data is owned by a certain scope. For instance, when we create the purchase string, it is owned by the main function. When it calls the add dollar sign function, it transfers ownership from itself to the add dollar sign. In other words, it moves the purchase data. Add dollar sign then consumes the data and returns a new string, which main owns under the name purchase with dollar sign. Finally, it uses that new data to call the print line function. However, print line also asks for purchase, which the main function no longer owns. This is what causes that error. Of course, again we ask, why? This seems arbitrary. The primary answer to that is memory management. I know the C programmers in the audience just gasped. You see, the string type is actually a pointer into heap memory, and heap memory needs to be manually allocated or deallocated. Ownership helps Rust keep track of who's using this heap memory, and if they're done with it, so that it can be deallocated properly. Okay, but that doesn't tell us how to solve this problem. The answer is to borrow it by creating a reference to it. This tells the program that we're not sending the actual data to the new function, just a pointer to it. The function can consume this pointer without actually consuming the data it points to. We do have to modify add dollar sign to use references. The type of a reference is just an ampersand, followed by the type that it points to. Consider the following. Instead of taking in the string reference and returning the string, what if we just modified the string in place? However, we would then get an error, saying that we can't set the data. You see, just like variables, references are immutable by default, meaning you can't modify the data that the references point to. But if we combine the concepts of mutability and ownership, we can arrive at a mutable reference. The type of the mutable reference, similarly to the immutable one, is an ampersand, followed by the mut, followed by the type it points to. This ensures that the program works. However, mutable references come at a price. You can have either any number of immutable references, or just one mutable reference. In fact, mutable references are sometimes called exclusive references for this reason. If we had two mutable references to the same data, one function could modify data that a function was already in the process of modifying, leading to a collision. In addition, if we had a mutable reference while other functions had an immutable reference, we could read data while it was being written, which is data race. Note that when there are outstanding references to an object, it's penned in memory. If it was moved, that would invalidate all of these references since they are now pointing to nothing. Of course, there are ways around these limitations, but they are outside of our scope for now. Next time, we'll talk about how data is actually organized and how to create your own data structures.